the millennial reign. And, um, and I'm going to be talking about that, but um, what I want to talk about tonight when it comes to the millennial reign, I'm going to go in great, much more depth next Wednesday night. But as I was preparing today and um, going over the scriptures and looking over everything about tonight, you know, about Jesus' return and coming back at the second coming and also to the millennial reign, and I was thinking about that thousand years of peace and the wonderful bliss here on earth when Christ sets up his kingdom on earth, I was thinking to myself, you know, when Jesus comes, everything's going to change. And I thought about that. When Jesus comes, everything is going to change. All right. Okay, by his own words, um, he's a false teacher. He has no understanding, and he's got no business at all teaching anything about the Bible, really. All right, so he's right. When Jesus comes, everything will change. You know, just like what we read in Revelation 21. Behold, I make all things new. No question about it. All right, behold, I make all things new. All right, so the problem is this guy... He says that when Jesus comes, there will be a thousand years of peace. Right, just uh, you know, just so I hope people are paying attention. You know, because turn and coming back at the second coming, and also to the millennial reign. And I was thinking about that thousand years of peace. And All right, so what? Just so we're clear, this fella is saying. That Jesus will come in the clouds of heaven, and after his return, there's going to be a thousand years of peace. And that's not even remotely true. You know, a thousand years is nothing. And you really technically can't even have any peace at all. No matter how peaceful the world might be for a thousand years, you've got no peace at all if it's not eternal. And when Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of heaven and we are transformed into our glorified bodies, it's eternal. We have eternal life even right now. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, this wicked world will be destroyed forever all right when we are transformed into our glorified bodies it's the end of the world all the unsaved are destroyed okay this is happening at the last trump when we are changed into our glorified bodies and when we are changed we are up in the air with the Lord Jesus and that our enemy is gathered at our feet all right, just like what we read in Genesis 3, verse 15, and all throughout the Bible. You know, in Genesis 3, the Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Just like what we read in Psalm 110, I will put enmity, I'm sorry, <laughs> Tell he oh what's that say? Oh goodness sakes. I forgot. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. And just like what we read in Revelation three verse nine, behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. And in 1 Corinthians 15, again, the last, oh, I'm sorry, uh, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. So when this happens, we're up in the air, all right, and we're up in the air at the last trump, which is the end of the world. And when we're up in the air, we are changed, we are in, transformed into our glorified bodies, all right, when this happens, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. 
So this idea of a thousand years of peace is absolutely wicked. It's evil. It's corrupt. It's a lie only from the devil. All right. Only from the devil, because God does not say that whatsoever at all, anywhere in his word. We don't have, we don't put our hope into a thousand years. We put our hope into everlasting life. Alright? Everlasting life. We put our hope into eternal life. All right, even Daniel says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is the end of the world. This is the final judgment of God when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. If you're not already saved, you're destroyed forever. And again, um, you know, Jesus over and over again teaches us about eternal life and these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into life eternal all right so this happens at the end of the world when jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump it's the end of the world and we are raised incorruptible we are changed into our glorified bodies we are lifted up in the air to meet the Lord and our enemy is gathered at our feet he shall reign till he has put all enemies under his feet we're up in the air enemies down below fire comes down from God and devours them all right, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven at the last trump, this is, and this happens where we're changed into our glorified body. Our enemy is gathered at our feet and destroyed forever and shall, and then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. Now that's important to understand. And I won't get into today, I won't get into how this uh, false teacher is a sign of the end times that we read about in Matthew 24. But you can clearly read it for yourself in Matthew 24. We're warned about what's going to happen as we get closer to the end of the world. And obviously, what's happening now is the same thing and that is deceivers are growing in numbers and very few people are teaching the truth of the Word of God and the reason for that is is because they are lacking in faith in other words they don't believe the Bible that they hold in their hands and we see evidence of this um, every single day going to cut it there. Thank you. Leave a comment and have a good day.